and welcome to the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, J Pop. Welcome back to the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, Jay Pops. Guys, we have an intriguing episode on this uh, edition of the Homemade Podcast Sports. What we'll be getting into is Jimbo Fisher and the talks of him maybe on the hot seat, which is, uh, you know, what, what is also oh crazy to me. So, uh, like I say, on this latest edition, of a homemade podcast sports we'll, we'll be getting into a little bit of uh jimbo fishing on the hot seat so guys let me break down a couple of things to you know uh we're, we're just gonna go ahead and jump on into it now uh guys so from an article that i was reading uh on early the other day it had on there you know uh the texas a and m aggies are entering year three under head coach jimbo fish so far the results have been decent but not what was expected when Fisher signed a fully guaranteed 10 years, $75 million contract. Stop right there. So the thing about it is this. What do we hear every time that we hear Jimbo's Fisher name get mentioned anywhere? That's the $75 million man. That's the 10 years, 70, 10 years. Keyword, and I'm underlining it right there. 10 years. He got $75 million for 10 years. Guys, he has 10 years to get it fixed. Don't get me wrong. We don't want to see a whole 10 years go by and you're still fixing the program. No, that isn't what I'm saying. So please, you know, don't, don't take those words and confuse it. What I'm saying is this. Jimbo Fisher will have that Texas a football program fixed. In five years or less. He is in year number three now. I believe this year he'll have it fixed. Regardless if we don't win the SEC West. He'll still have that program fixed to where they will be in a potential hunt each and every season that he's the head coach there. That's my thing. I don't know. I'm not going to set those expectations as, oh, he need to hurry up and get a national title now. No, no, man, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. First of all, you have to build a national championship roster, okay? Second of all, you have to build an all-SEC roster on both sides of the ball. It can't just be one side and that's it. It has to be both sides of the ball. Third of all, you have to keep on recruiting, man. Like I always mention, like I always say, give Jimbo Fisher – time to get this train going in the right direction this is only year number three and if for whatever reason that uh the athletic department is already thinking about firing him i just want to tell you guys right now i don't know what coach you bring in to say okay we get us a national title now because it just doesn't work yeah i know the first name come to mind is who urban miles yeah i know but come on, guys. Stop it. Stop it, man. This is... Uh, man, this... It kills me to know that every time his name is mentioned, it's the $75 million contract that's always mentioned right beside him. It's crazy. It's crazy to me, man. Uh, I guess what everybody is saying is, well, he didn't deserve $75 million. That's fine if you guys have that opinion. Is that a fact? No. That's fine if you guys have that opinion about that. That's fine. But guys, he's only in year number three. You don't build a championship team right then and there. I understand that Urban Myers went to Ohio State and done it, but at the same time, Ohio State's blue blood, people. They already had to tell them. Urban just came in and went undefeated that one season that they couldn't go uh that they couldn't go to a bowl game, but he came back the next season and went right back to work. They already had the talent there. 
He didn't have to go recruit his hard to get those guys to buy in. Man, Ohio State was already bought. You know, Nick Saban, another one. It was a blue blood. Alabama is a blue blood, people. He didn't have to go and build the damn roster all over again. The roster was already given to him with enormous amount of talent that just was waiting to be woken up. You know, he, he just had to wake up a couple of people, could put a couple of people here and there, change a couple of coaches, out, and that was it. Did he have a quarterback like Tua Tagovailoa? No. Hell, he didn't have a quarterback like Jalen Hurts at the time. No. But Nick Saban has been doing it. You know? But like I say, man, those were all blue blood teams. Clemson wasn't a blue blood. But how long did it take Dabo Swinney to get there? It took him over five years, people. He took, even when he took those losses, it, took, it still took him over five years to get that program to where it's at now. In which, in my mind, they aren't coming down from the ACC crown anytime soon. Anytime soon. So you're looking at another five to ten more years of Clemson running the ACC. You know, so it's 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 crazy to me that yeah, it's just the seventy five dollars seventy five million dollars always get mentioned, man. So that's what I you know we all believe that everybody just has problem with. But anyways, let's keep going further. So it says on here. So this season, the season when AM makes a jump and continues for SEC West title in the spot in Atlanta, or when the Aggies come up short once again. Let's take a look at some hype surrounding AM. All right. We'll give the first word to Fisher himself, which seems fair. The former Florida State uh, coach who led the Seminoles to a title in 2013 certainly isn't going to shy away from expectations, which is true. And that's that's why I like Jimbo Fisher, and I'm real high on Fisher recently reminded us that the Aggies finished second in the West in his first year. And they did. True story. Now, the next year, didn't, didn't do so well. Or, or at least in everybody else's mind. Hell, they, they done good to me, shit, given uh, the schedule that they had and given the roster uh, injury turnover that they had. They still came out good. <laughs> you know, but shit, everybody wanted more. But hell, guys, we were playing a lot of freshmen, man. A lot of folks were injured. There's no excuses that I'm making, but I'm just saying, people. In order to play in the SEC and the SEC West alone, man, you have to have depth at every damn position. You have to. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You have to. You have to have depth at every position. You have to. He he done the best that he could do. Offense wasn't nothing, you know. Yeah, offense played like crap. We all know that. Uh, defense done all that they can do, given the uh, given the roster that they had, because they had to start putting freshmen in a lot of spots. But let's keep going. With the way the Aggies have recruited the last two years, Fisher said the team is excited to get back to work this fall. And I believe that. I believe that. I know they are. I can see it in them, man. Those guys are hungry. They're hungry. As far as rankings go, you know, of course, uh, we were ranked at number 10. Uh, the highest one we had was eight. You know, they were going to rank us at eight at one point. Uh, but it's a lot of guys still saying that we'll end up in a cotton bowl. Which, which is fine with me, man, because you have to keep on going. End up in the Cotton Bowl. None of the game day al uh, analysts picked the Aggies to make the playoff. Except, except Reese Davis. Because he sees something that I'm seeing. That team will come with a whole different type of mentality this year. I just want to let you guys know that this team will come with a whole different type of uh, energy. To have it on their mind. It's something that's on their mind that's eating at them. We got blew out by LSU by all means. You know, uh, that's that's one that's eating at them. Uh, Alabama, you know, we haven't been able to just really hang with them for the last two years. Uh, Auburn, we haven't been able to beat them for the last two years. That one year, we should have won that, but that's a different story. All right, the second year, we just completely got the socks torn off our asses, and we tried to come back, but 
we we just couldn't, okay? So it is what it is on that. Uh, we got beat by Mississippi State that first year of Jimbo Fish, which we should have won at. You know, so it's it's a lot of things that should have went our way, but it just went the other way. It just went the other way and uh, put a knife in a potential 10-win season the first year. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's still certain things that that Aggie football team is pretty upset about. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, it's, and as well as uh, Jimbo Fish. Uh, so, all I'm saying is that if any of my Aggie fans do have them on high seat, I just want to tell you guys this now. Man, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. And if you guys think that he's going to underperform this year, you're crazy, you, you crazy on that too. Uh, and if anybody else out there thinks he's going to underperform this year, that's, that's, that's completely nonsense. That's ridiculous to me. He has depth in all the right spots going into this year. All right, that's all I'm saying. Just hear me out on that one and listen to me. That's all I have for this episode here. On tomorrow, I'll be bringing out a, a fresh new set of uh, players to be on the watch list. Uh, once again, guys, thank you for tuning in to the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, Jay Pops. Please, guys, hit that subscribe button on my YouTube page. Also, follow me on Facebook at, homie, I mean, uh, at hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Also on Twitter at jpops05 and on Instagram at jpops2020. Thank you guys once again. It's the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, Jay Pops. Hashtag GigaMag. And thank you guys for tuning in to the hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Please, guys, uh, subscribe to the YouTube page and also follow me on Twitter at jpops, on Instagram at jpops, and also on Facebook at hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Thank you guys once again. Hashtag is